God knew how long that I was feeling. Oh, in the emptiness I tried so hard to hide. Though I laughed and said my life is fine without you. I was covering up all the secret tears I cried. Oh, then one day, my dad, he told me all your mercy and the love you showed that day on Calvary. Oh, there you died. Oh, just to purchase my redemption. When you brought sense power and set my spirit free. I've gone astray Oh, but I've learned Your love is stronger than my weakness And your ear is open Every time I pray For no one else Has ever cared for me like you, Lord No other friend Could never be as close to me for I am not afraid to face the problems of tomorrow. Oh, you are everything I'll ever need. Oh, I'm amazed that you love me.
It crossed my mind again Just how my life would be Had the Father's mercy Not included me I saw myself still drifting On a raging sea Farther out from nowhere Hurting endlessly And turning back this page of time It all comes into view I realize I'm nothing without you Don't let me lose sight Christ was made to redeem this hurting soul. An awesome price was paid. Lord, you endured the suffering and took all my shame. You faced the bitter agony as they mocked your without you.
questions fill your mind changes can be hard that come by god's design but if you could see tomorrow with a view from heaven's throne every unexpected struggle has led you closer home when god has another plan walk on and just say yes when god has another plan be assured that he knows best Starting in verse number 1, the Bible says this. The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. And it came to pass that at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, that his eyes began to wax dim, and he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. For the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Verses 1 through 3, I want you to think about this for a moment. I want you to visualize what's going on. Samuel is just but a child, very young. The Bible makes it very clear that there's a man by the name of Eli that at this place, that really ultimately, if you want to say it this way, is in charge. The only problem is, is that he had a job. And his job was to do what he did not do, found out in verse number 3, and the air of the lamp had went out. His job was to be able to keep that on. And the reason was, is because God himself is the one that's responsible. It's heaven to be able to do these things. But see, what happens is so many things God does. But the problem is this, it's not what God does, it's what we fall short to be able to follow through what God already starts in our own lives, and our hearts. And the Bible says that in this time, that here, pretty much to make it plain, good old boy terms, Eli was found unfaithful. He wasn't worthy to be trusted. There was such a great need for what Eli was called to do. But the problem is, is Eli... Wasn't committed as much as Eli said he was. But yet there was this little boy by the name of Samuel. And the Bible says in verse number 4, After they said that Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here am I. Samuel got up. The Bible says in verse number 5, And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I. Thou, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and he went to Eli and he said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now I want you to keep the visual. Here this is a child that's sleeping. This child awakes because the Lord is trying to talk to him. But what happens is the child really don't understand. He can't comprehend He If you want to say it this way, maybe you can't really understand the voice of God, yet God is speaking. So he does what typically any other child would do. He went to somebody that he saw in a leadership position. He arose, the Bible says, and he rode to Eli, and he said, here and He could hear God stirring, but he thought it was Eli, not God. And Eli kept saying, go lie back down. Now let me remind you this. Eli was supposed to stay awake. Twice this boy comes to him so far and he tells him this, but yet 
He can't even get enough backbone to be able to get up and do what he's supposed to do. But yet this little boy is still trying to hear, listen, hear the voice of God. Hear the voice of God. Discern the voice of God. Understand the voice of God. Be able to comprehend in a way that nobody can explain to him the voice of God. Anybody ever want to hear from God? Have you ever got to a place to where you really want to know, God, is this you? Is it not you? God, what are you doing? What are you saying to me, Lord? Is it you? Maybe you think it's somebody else. Maybe you think it's you. Am I telling me what I'm hearing? And you look to every avenue and every person and you're trying to get understanding. You're trying to comprehend. You're trying to wrap your mind around what's going on. But yet heaven is trying to get a hold of your heart. Look at me. You desperately want to hear from heaven. You desperately want to know what heaven thinks or what heaven says about your situation, your matter, your home, your marriage, your ministry, your life. I think anybody that's ever been saved, you want to know what God says about your situation. The Bible says that this young man, he had ran back to him. And then notice the Bible says this, if you keep going. He says in verse number 9, or verse number 7, And now Samuel did yet not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down. And it shall be. Notice what he says. If he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. And Samuel went, down, went, went and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and, sent and called uh, at another time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hear it. I want to think on this thought just for a few moments this morning to think about the very principle, are you just here? Are you just here? The Bible says, as we've already elaborated about a week ago when we begin to unfold some of these, these scriptures, that Eli was in a place that really he was supposed to be the one to be trusted because, see, when you study this out, you realize there's no judge, there's no prophet, there's no Moses, there's no Joshua. It's in a very hard time for this day and age of where they're living in. And here there's this young man by the name of Samuel. And God is trying to do something in Samuel's life. He's in a time of transition. Now I want to say this to you this morning. I understand. I am well aware of how hard and difficult that transition may be. Transition in a home. Transition in a marriage. Transition in a ministry. Transition in your own life when God is trying to do something inside of you. And yet you do not understand what it is. You fear what the next step is because you know that the God that you serve is a bigger God. We treat God sometimes like the doctor. We don't want to go to the doctor because we really don't want to know what the doctor says. And listen, even though we want to be well, we don't want to hear the truth. Well, see, that's the same way with the Lord. We want to be better. We want to be pleasing to God. We want God to be able to use us. But sometimes we don't go to God. Why? Because we fear what he might say. Say, now, I will say this to you. There's a lot of people here today that they want to be spiritual giants. They want to be a Superman hero, if you will, when it comes to being spiritual. They want to say, I always want to hear what God says. And let me say this to you. Before you get so shallow to be able to think about it that way, I too always want to hear what God says. But I want to say this, in my humanity and in my flesh, I understand that the things of God are a lot bigger than who I am and what my name is. And there's been times in my life, and you hear me well, when God was stirring in me the way that he stirred in you. And God was asking for something that I did not want to give. When God was telling me something that I did not want to hear. When in the spirit I knew that I could, but in the flesh I was weak. But yet God said, I've got a plan. And you wonder what in the world's going to happen. How is God ever going to bring this to pass? Why? Because God things are God things. You can't live it by action. You must live it by faith. 
And every single one of us have got a situation, we've got a, a circumstance, we have a decision that we want to make this morning. There is something that's ahead of us. And I want to say this, the day that you get so boastful and the day you get so arrogant and the day you get so independent to where you make your decisions based upon what you know and what your wisdom is, is the day that you will fall flat on your face. Lo and behold, you're going to be the person to pick yourself up. And then you're going to ask yourself in the mirror, why didn't I pray before now? Why didn't I walk with God faithfully before now? Why didn't I do what God wanted me to do before now? Why? Because you try so hard to get back. Because transitions can be difficult. And if you would have been prepared, you'd have heard the voice of God. And not only would you have heard the voice of God, you'd have listened to the voice of God. Sometimes we, we have fear. We have anxiety. And I want to say this to you. I know what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that anxiety, being in that afraid, that, that be not, he says, he says not to worry and, and, and be able to keep yourself from it. Philippians chapter number four. I know if he tells us not to do that, then when we get in that state of mind, when we begin to, get, begin to think that God can fix the situation and we begin to doubt God, I know that that is sin when we doubt God. And it's sometimes to be uneasy when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but just because you realize you can't do it does not mean that you can doubt God. God is always faithful we looked in this text and I said last week that there was an atmosphere of this call see not only was it a situation that was transitional but it was harder than that because it got deeper than that this is what the Bible says the Bible says in that atmosphere that there was no understanding of the word of God because it said that the word was precious now, I'm not saying the word is precious like you and I hold our, uh, our, our things that we love precious. That's not what it's saying. The word of God is precious to me that way, and I thank the Lord for that. But what he meant by the word defined by precious is this, is that the word of God was not seen and heard like it should be. So here Samuel is in a time of transition. But it's like he can't find a word and he can't hear a word. So now it seems to get darker on him because when, his, when, when he gets to that place of answering the call of God, he can't hear somebody say it. So if it ain't for the word being preached now, the only person that can speak to him is God himself. And I'm glad that God was faithful to do so. Listen, you might not know the Bible, but listen, if God wants to get a hold of your heart, God will get a hold of your heart. You say, Brother Jason, I can't do that. I don't know what the Bible says. If the Holy Ghost lives inside of you, you don't need what the Bible says. The Holy Ghost will tell you what the Bible says. Amen. It's never going to contradict itself. But also there was no commitment. Listen to me. I'm talking about a tough time when God's trying to speak to you and me. A tough time when you and I are trying to hear from heaven. At those moments, we need the Word of God. Can I get an amen? But also, at those moments, sometimes we need some people in our life that we like to lean to. But the problem is, is there was also no commitment in that day. When Eli was needed, he wasn't found faithful. The Bible says that the air of the lamp had went out. Literally, I mean, it was going to be a time where, where Eli could have been trusted. He could have been used in a great and a mighty way. But the Bible says that when it happened, that Eli was unfaithful. He was not the leader that he should have been. I want to ask you the same thing I asked you a week ago. Are you as committed to the things that God has asked you to be committed to as you should be? If there was a young person in your life or somebody in your life that needed to see Jesus, could you be found faithful for them to see Jesus in your life? You say, I, that's why I bring them to church, Brother Jason. That's why I send them to summer camp, Brother Jason. 
That's why we come to the church we come to. I believe the Bible's preached. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that. I praise God that you feel that way. And you think that we preach the Word. I'm, fo- I'm thankful for that. But let me say this, friend. It's not my job to be commi- committed to what God has called you to do. And it's not your job to be committed to what God has called me to do. It is your job to be committed to what God has asked you to do. And if you're not found faithful, who's going to pay the price We drag our kids everywhere, not around the things of God. What are you going to do one day when my 11-year-old boy looks up to me and he don't want to go to church because I never made church in importance and then all of a sudden he wants to make everything else including all the lifestyle and the ball games and all that. And listen, I'm going to preach it straight because I'm going to preach it straight, friend. I'd rather my son be saved on his way to heaven, sold out for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd rather him be a preacher and a pastor even though I know the difficulties of it. Hey, I thank God if God would call my son to share the gospel with somebody, I'd be excited about that. But the problem is, is we've got a lot of people that's not found faithful. Listen, it ain't even in the world, it's in the church. I said it last week, we try to get nursery workers. By the way, we're, we're hiring nursery workers, but we ain't paying nothing. <laughs> people in the choir, people teaching Sunday school, people in the sound booth. Thank, thank God, thank God Deborah's faithful right now because I ain't got nobody else, hey man. Y'all had to have me playing over there. But you know what? She got burdens just like you and I got. She got family needs just like you and I got. And all of a sudden you come in here and sit down. Ain't no music. Ain't no no tapping your toes because it's just not what it used to be. No, I'll tell you what it is. That's one person. And listen, she don't open her mouth to preach. She don't open her mouth to teach. But what God has allowed her to do, she's trying to do it to the very best of her ability. But look how it would affect so many people if she was not found faithful. How about it, Daddy? I know we're not talking about church, but are you found faithful? Is the pulpit teaching your children about Jesus, or are you able to be able to have a devotion at home? Does the preacher have to preach a sermon for you to understand what the Bible says about your marriage? Or are you devoting your family to be able to sit down with the Word of God and pray to a Heavenly Father and understand because you are found faithful in the home? Listen, it's not something to outsource. We're talking about your children. We're talking about your family. We're talking about an opportunity that God has given you. It's important that we're found faithful. I know I'm not a good singer. But I want to say this, if my wife or son was ever at a place in their life where they was like, can you sing for me? And they were struggling. I don't need you to compliment my singing. I'm going to sing because God's going to help me sing. I want to be the one to be found faithful and sitting around and sharing the Word of God. I'll never forget one day, and I had to move on. I'll never forget one day when I sat down at my daddy's house, and I went to go visit him. And, and I'll never forget sitting out there in his, in his shed. And he had built this shed and done it all by himself. He's a man's man like a lot of you men. And I was sitting around talking to my daddy, and he made the comment. He said, Jason, he said, I just hope when I stand before the good Lord above that he'll see all the good I've done. My daddy's a good man. He's helped people. He does things he builds things he'll give you the shirt off his back he can roll on and do a lot of stuff but the truth be told your good won't get you to heaven and I was so thankful that that day that somewhere down my line that I had learned how to quote Bible not because I was just a preacher not because I just wanted to be able to brag about my mind and, and, and what I can remember but I was so thankful that I could look at my father and say daddy let me tell you what the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God had raised thee from the dead thou shalt be saved I mean I was glad that I could quote scripture and be found faithful that day there was a time I wasn't that way let me ask you a question, Mama. We got a lot of single moms. Let me ask you a question. You gonna live your life making an excuse that there's not a man in your house? Or are you gonna be found faithful to be able to teach that child the word of God and love them the way that God can empower you to love them? Don't you let some fatherless uh, or, 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 or I'm gonna say absent man be the excuse of you not doing what God has called for that child to do. 
you dig in there and you trust God and you bring them to church and you teach them the Word of God. Be faithful to the things of God and God will use you in a great way. The problem is, is we got so many excuses. We got so many excuses. I see a lot of people, man, I used to see them at church, and I know it's a Sunday morning crowd. Man, I'd see them at church, and man, they'd come to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, they'd sing in the choir. They'd sing in the choir because they were still thankful, just like so many testified today that God had saved them. They'd sing in the choir because they was thankful they had a new song. They were singing the choir because they knew that I don't talk like I used to talk. They'd sing in the choir because they knew I'm not the man that I used to be. They sang in the choir because they was thankful. Hey, that even though I had nothing, hey, that God is allowing me the privilege to be able to stand before a church. That's why they sang in the choir. But now they don't sing in the choir because it's not convenient. Now they don't sing in the choir because it's not timely. Now they don't sing in the choir because it's not good for their schedule. Now they don't sing in the choir because it's something that's not what it used to be or it's at a different time of a TV show or an activity. And I'm not just talking about the choir. There's a lot of things around here people ain't faithful to anymore. What are you going to do when our children look at us and make those comments? I've seen so many people pray for things and ask God to give them something and God give it. Listen, and they're more unfaithful than they've ever been before. They look good on the outside, but on the inside, they're so discontent and so absent. Hey, listen, friend, I don't know everything. I'm not God. But I'm telling you, it's pretty obvious who's engaged and what's going on in the service and who ain't. Amen. 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 And it gets to a point where you got to understand that, hey, you could sit here, but just because you sit here don't mean you're listening. You might just be here, as I said when we started. Are you just here? Are you just here? Are you just here to hear the preaching? Are you just here to say you've been here? Are you just here to talk about it at lunch? Are you just here so you can say I got something on Facebook and tweet it and be able to put a quote and act like you love Jesus? Is that why you're just here? Or are you here so you can hear from heaven? Because if you hear from heaven, it'll change your life. If you hear from heaven, it'll make you different when you walk out of those doors. The problem is we might come here, but we still don't hear. That's why God ain't made a decision in your life for a long time. When's the last time you came to the altar? Not because you were broken in a hardship, but because you needed God to do something in your life so you could go on for Him. See, it's easy to get people to come to church and come to the altar when their life ain't good. Show me the last person to come to the altar because they wanted more of God. Show me the last person to answer the call. Show me the last person that says, I'm going to submit. I'm going to sell out for the, for the choir. I'm going to sell out for the nursery. I'm going to sell out for the kids' program. I'll do what it is. I'm coming to the altar, not because I'm broken, Brother Jason. Not because i got a problem with this addiction, Brother Jason. Not because I've got all these issues. Not because I've been sinning and ain't nobody seen it and God convicted me. I'm coming to the altar because I've been living right. I'm coming to the altar because I love Jesus. And I come to the altar because I've been praying. And I come to the altar because I've been studying my Bible. And I came here down, to, down here today to commit my life and tell him, I love you and I want to serve you. That's why you come to the altar. If that's not the case, then why do you always ask your kids what's wrong when they go to the altar? Because they've been taught to come to the altar only when something's wrong. Preach on, Brother Jason. Preach on. Preach on. And I'm going to tell you something, the young generation that's in here, my generation, for those of you that just got married and and raised it up and and you're in your 20s and 30s and 40s, listen, you better buckle down because God is slowly taking that generation away from us. Oh, yes. And it's a time that we get committed because this is the atmosphere that we live in. The second thing that I want you to see is the answer to the call. I'm sorry, the awakening to the call. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 4 and 5. He says, then, notice this, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here am I. Verse number 5, and he ran to Eli and he said, here am I for thou didst call me. He ran to Eli, the awakening of the call. Listen, when he went to Eli, it should, light bulbs should have went off in Eli's head. This is God trying to tell me I need to be faithful. You know what Eli did? He went back to sleep. You know what that's like? That's like you calling me and asking me to pray for you, hanging up the phone and going back to sleep. Come on now. 
He just went back to sleep. And the Bible says that God was stirring in this young man by the name of Samuel. And God was stirring. And here's the key. How do you know God's speaking to you? He said, Brother Jason, I come not just to come. I come because I want to hear from heaven. How do you know? Well, number one, let me just give you this. And this ain't Bible. Number one, that means you got to turn off everything else that you're listening to. That means you got to turn off everything else you're punching on. Huh? That means you need to put aside everything that's distracting you. Huh? That means you need to stay put and not have to go use the bathroom and tinkle every 15 minutes. Come on now, I'm going to preach it straight. Amen. You know why? Because I'm telling you, if God is going to hold me behind this pulpit, it's my job for you to see Jesus. And if all I let us do is be satisfied that you come to church and say you did something good, what good is it for the day that God removes me or takes me or takes me home or you move on in your life? It's important that you know what the voice of God sounds like. Distractions, get them out of the way. Get them out of the way. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says, verse number four, and the Lord called Eli. Let me say this. It's the Lord who initiates the call. Are you hearing me? It's the Lord that initiates the call. When you're thinking about the awakening of this call, I want you to know that it's God who's calling you. It's not your mama, not your daddy, not your youth pastor, not your friend. Because the truth be told, your mama, your daddy, your youth pastor, your pastor, and your friend, they might be okay with what's going on in your life. But God ain't okay with it. Come on now. We, we'll talk to everybody. It's important you know who's calling you. It's God. And you run from it. Let me help you remind, or remind you. Read the book of Jonah. Read the book of Jonah. And not only did Jonah suffer, Listen. The other men on the boat suffered with Jonah. Who else is going to suffer in your life because you won't be found faithful? Y'all staying with me? The second thing that I want you to see is this. Samuel didn't recognize when God was calling him. Talking about the waking of the call. I say that for this reason. Look at me. You're not always going to comprehend what God's asking you to do. God ever told you to help a family and you didn't know why? Huh? God ever called you to do something and that wasn't really your cup of tea? Right? I mean, listen, I've seen people serve in the youth ministry and I I never even knew they liked kids. (laughs) I'm like, that's got to be God, amen? That's got to be God. And here's why. Because God is not going to always ask you something that's convenient. I hate to tell you this, but if you're living a very convenient life, I would ask you or challenge you to examine yourself with God. I'm challenging you to examine. If you're so comfortable in your life, then evaluate your walk with the Lord. Evaluate it. I want you to notice this too in verse number 7. The Bible says that he did not, now Samuel did not know the Lord. I'm glad when I don't even know anything about the Lord, the Lord still knows who I am. You hear me? I want you to notice this, verse number 6, 7, verse 4, 6, and 8. I'm talking about the awakening of the call. I'm going to walk through this quickly. Notice what he says, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel, it's a personal call. And you know what? The call that God has for your life, can't nobody answer that call but you. You know them children God gave you, can't nobody else be a better father or mother than you. Why? Because God chose you. Be the best you can be. Be the best you can be. The Bible says that he came down to this place and he fallen asleep. Notice he comes to Eli over and over and over. And he says to him, Eli, the problem was Eli kept going back. I wrote this down. Listen to me. I'll give you my next point. Listen to me. Even when other people's, even when other people fail that you should depend on, God will still make a way. 
Look at me. Don't make no excuses for you not being what God wants you to be. There are no excuses. You ever heard the term man up, woman up? You say, yeah, but I wasn't raised. I'm afraid I wasn't raised that way. Well, my mama, my mama, you don't know what I used to, you don't know what I used to do. Quit making excuses. Because God said, listen, the Bible says God just stepped over Eli. Eli was, Eli failed. Yeah, but my daddy walked out, I, and I'm not, listen, I'm not belittling what something happened to you in your past. But I'm just telling you, if God could step over Eli's failure, God could step over failures in our life. He said, hey, don't worry about that. I'm still God, and I'll take care of it. Quit making excuses. Quit making excuses. I want you to notice this, though. The Bible says in verses 4, 6, and 8 that he calls him. Notice how persistent the Lord is. The Bible says that he kept calling and he never came. But then notice verse number 10. And the Lord came and he stood. I just want to say I'm glad that God never quits calling us. Look up here. Just because you and me get busy, and just because sometimes we're stubborn, and sometimes we all get preoccupied, and sometimes we're here but we're not here, all of us is that way, friend. I'm glad God don't give up. I'm glad he don't just quit on me. Like everybody else will quit on you. Because the Bible says when he was calling and he didn't answer, you know what he did? The Bible said he came to him. He came to me. A couple weeks ago, you know what the Lord done for you? Yeah. He kept calling and kept calling and kept calling. And all due respect, you kept, like a bunch of us, we kept running and we all kept running. Y'all been there? Y'all been there? Kept running. And all of a sudden, the Lord just comes and said, hey, look up here. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Yeah. Right? i never forget when I was battling after I got saved I'd go over to a preacher's house man I'd sit there they had them ball games and I'd go to his house because see if, I, if there was any time in the afternoon I knew there was enough time for me to mess up so if I'd go over there and stay till I got really tired then I'd be half asleep but I'd be half asleep and I'd go straight home <laughs> right so I had to sleep out my temptation, you know what I'm saying? But I remember when I felt like God was calling me to preach, I can't recall the times. I'd go in there and sit around that little island. I'd lean up against that wall, and he'd always go get a Diet Coke. I'd say, Preacher, how do you know God's calling you to preach? You just know. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, Preacher. Next night, same thing. Next night, same thing. My wife and I were, were dating at a time, and Brother Shane and Miss Angie sat on that third row to the front, and we sat right behind them. And I, I wept every service. Why? Because I could hear something calling, but I could not understand it. Preacher, preach those messages. Will you be the one? On him they laid the cross. I mean, I could tell you. I mean, and it, it was like the Holy Ghost was jumping on my shoulders. But I'm glad that God never quit because for three months I battled that. If I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but if I ain't saying this wrong, I even remember one time, Brother Shane, I think you told me that Angie said, I don't know what's wrong with him, but I hope he get it right. Isn't that right? I mean, every tissue, every arm I had, I, snot was all over. Every, I, I probably used their hair and blew my nose in it. <laughs> but listen, God never gave up. God never gave up. He came to me. He came to me. And I want to tell you something. When God comes to you, if he's got a call on your life, and I'm not just, listen, this is why I didn't name it, answer the call today. 
the thought that's on my heart for this message is, are you just here? Because, see, it's not about the call. It's about hearing God. You'll never answer God if you can't hear, hear the call. you got to hear the call. But here's the problem. We ain't hearing the call because we ain't listening. Amen. We ain't hearing the call because we ain't listening. And then we're marrying the wrong person because we weren't listening. And then we're doing the wrong things because we weren't listening. Now, it seems godly, it looks godly, it feels godly, and in church, everybody probably deems it to be godly. But if you ain't hearing from God, you ain't hearing nothing. And that's why everybody's messing up. That's why everybody runs strong. Preacher, I want to serve. And then all of a sudden, they fall flat on their face and they're done. Why? I'm going to tell you something, friend. You can have a burden. I mean, I'm just being, you can have a burden that's on your life and God can take that burden. But God puts a call on your life, he'll put a call on your life. You can't run from it. Listen, when, when Tiffany and y'all going to say this ain't no call, I can promise you God called me to be her husband. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you married, you better believe you better be called to be her husband or her wife, his wife. <laughs> I remember sitting down there and I, I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, Tiffany has this um, sense of being very <laughs> opinionated to me, all right? <laughs> and I, be, I said, I ain't living like that all my life. And I'll never forget one day, sitting down, God had been dealing with my heart, I was still going to church. And I remember the Lord telling me, no matter what, you'll love her forever. She's the one. And let me just tell you a secret. And I'll be transparent with you. There's been many a times that I too have had the options, and she has too, where it'd been easier just to. But I couldn't. Because that's where God called me. And when I told her for better or for worse, it had to be for better or for worse. In sickness and in health, for richer, for poor. <laughs> poor. But I knew that's what God told me to do. Right. I haven't been the best. And I fell all the time. But because God was persistent with me. Last thing I'm done, you come. You come, Miss Deborah. The answer to the call. I want you to notice this real quick in the text. Notice this. Verse 4, 6, and 8. Notice what he says. Here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Listen to me. You're going to miss this. You're going to miss all of it. Here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Notice verse number 10, what he says. For thy servant heareth. What's the difference? Listen to this. Here am I, says I'm here. Thy servant heareth, says I hear. Here am I, says I'm here. Thy servant heareth. Says I hear. You know what matters when you and I come to church? It's not about you being here. It's about that you hear. Now I want to ask you a very open question right now. What have you heard today? What have you heard today? What have you heard today? What's the Holy Ghost told you today? Because that's a pretty good eye opener how good you and I listen. You say, God ain't calling me to preach. I didn't say this is a message about calling somebody to preach. It's about hearing the voice of God. What has God told you? What has God opened your eyes up to? And the Bible, listen, one, one, listen, one is showing up, the other one's listening up. There's a lot of people show up, but they don't listen. Amen. A lot of people show up, they don't listen. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, it ain't, it ain't me you're not listening to, it's God you're not listening to. 
It, 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 it don't bother, it, it, it grieves me because I truly love y'all. Like, I, lo- I love our church. I mean, I love y'all. I feel like you love me, yes, hopefully. But look, I love you. I want you to hear. But when you're not listening, when, you, when you're not faithful, when you're not committed, it's not me. And I know it because you'll, you'll dodge me, you won't talk to me, and you'll blame it on me. But you feel bad. And I'm like, it's not me. It's God. God saved you. God, God's answered your prayer. God called you. God gave you that spouse. God gave you that children. And if you and I ain't faithful for what God gave us, our wrong is not to the church and it's not to the preacher. Our wrong is to our Heavenly Father. So I want to ask you, who's making their mind up not just to be here, but to hear? Maybe you've got a situation you've been praying about. Let's be honest, church don't fix you. Everybody all right? I'm, not, I'm almost done, but I won't, I won't have this opportunity, have this much liberty in probably a long time. Amen, amen. Look, she's a visitor. Come back anytime, praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Listen, it is crucial. It is crucial that you hear from heaven. You got a prayer, you got a burden, you got kids, you got a situation, you got a decision you got to make. You got kids that you're trying, let's say you got kids you're trying to fix, but you, you're trying your best, but you just feel like you're inadequate. That's when we need to hear from heaven. See, it's not about the sermon. It's about the principle. Times where you want to jump boat and you want to quit and throw in the towel and say, I'm done and be mad. But listen, when you're here from heaven, I don't need nobody to applause. As long as heaven is satisfied, keep on trucking. I know the cross gets heavy. I know the cross gets heavy. I know what you do gets heavy. But if God's got it for you, He's going to sustain you. I know, I know them babies that come in our house and people adopt and take in and them burdens and people you help. I know, I know dating's a big task. But God will fix and answer and equip whatever God does. I heard one man say it this way about Peter. Peter sunk. I'm not, in the, I'm not in the business of debating on what you thought about Peter anyway. So let me say that up front. Peter sunk after he took off walking on water. The truth be told is when he began to sink and everybody's probably saying, I look, you look like an idiot, Peter. You know, in the back of his mind, he said, yeah, but the Lord's the one who told me to step out here. See, you're going to have failures after you answer what God tells you to do. But when you know it's what God told you to do, when you fall, even the devil can't shat, shat right of your cage. Stay on your feet, heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, help us today. I love you, Lord. Help us today. In Jesus' name, amen. As the pastor, I want to thank you for viewing our video today. However, if God's dealt with your heart, we do not want to end this video without giving you a chance to be able to accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. If you're there today and God's actually dealing with your heart, I want to remind you what the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means every single one of us has had problems, issues, sin, failures, faults in our past. The great thing is this, is that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh through the Father but by me. There is a way to be able to have hope, to have eternal security within the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to know that you're saved by the grace of God. Now the great thing about the Bible is it tells us about the love of God. He says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's amazing to a lot of people, and they can quote it. But the beauty of it is this, is the very next verse tells us the purpose of Christ. Because the Bible says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through Him might be saved. That means that God sent His Son to die for those of us who are sinners so that we can have fellowship with God Himself. Now, if you're there today and God's really been dealing with your heart, I want to ask you this question. Do you really believe that God's been dealing with you about salvation? 
If that's the case today, then I want to tell you what you need to do is repent of your sins. You need to die to yourself. Admit that you're lost and you're on your way to hell. And then look at what the Bible tells us that He tells us that we can be saved through Christ. Who do you call on? There's only one. As the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ and Christ alone. So I tell you today, would you trust in Christ? When I ask you, would you, would you trust in Him as a personal Savior? You say, Brother Jason, I don't really know if I can do that. Well, let me tell you, the Bible also tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It don't matter who you are, where you come from, God sent His Son to die for everyone. If you've made this decision today to be able to trust in Christ, to be able to die to yourself, to, to be able to start living for Christ and accept Him as a personal Savior after repenting, would you do us a favor and be able to contact us at 336-788-0551 and let us know about this decision that you made so we can start praying for you. Thank you so much.